Hey friends and welcome to this video. We're going to do a deck interview. I'm going to be working with um, a new deck that I just got. So this will be a real interview, not a staged one. Of the No Frills Oracle by Redfish Tarot. I picked up this deck in Sedona, Arizona. Um, I've been using it for a little bit. I really like it. I'm very connected to it. Um, let me show you why. Um, I didn't know this card existed in here, but once I saw it, I knew it was for me. Spiritual guidance, grace. Look at this asterisk, grace. Like, it doesn't even belong there. Someone put my name in this deck. That's why I love my name. Um, and this deck, I'll tell you a little bit about it, just from what I understand. Um, it has a card for each of the seven chakras, which I love. It has um, various healing modalities as very different cards, which I love. Um, it, I feel and sense that it really fills in the gaps of what I currently have in terms of Oracle decks. I love that it's local, locally made, like artist made. Um, there's, maybe it'll come out, um, but if not in a future video, it's, there's like a card with like a cat on it or a bunch of cats on it. Like it's a catitude card. There's just so many things about this deck that speak to me. Thank you so much. Who are you? Um, Ishti. Thanks Ishti for making this Oracle deck. It speaks loudly to me. He says, I chose to keep the cards size small and easy to handle. The cardstock is very durable and lightweight. I found this deck very helpful to support tarot readings as well as for daily inquiries. Please enjoy them and feel free to use your own interpretations. And they do private readings. There's a Yahoo email address. And then, of course, it does come with the... Um, some interpretations here it's just a really special deck super super special i don't know if you can get it online but if you're in sedona i got mine at the chaco tree place um yeah so the interview consists of seven questions one how do i see you wait is that right that's wrong i already messed this up let's start all over you're going to shuffle the cards as you would normally, and you're going to basically draw a seven card spread. I'm going to show you how exactly I lay it out in a second. The question for the deck, the first question is, how do you see you? You're asking the deck. How does the deck see itself? What are your strengths is the second question. What are your limits is the third question. Um... What are you here to teach me is the fourth question. The fifth question then is how can I, I best learn to collaborate with you? How can I best learn to work with you? It's like what do you come to the table with? What does it want you to come to the table with? Yep. Yeah, the sixth question. What is the outcome of us working together? You and me together. Um, and then the seventh question is, how do I see you? I'm looking for, again, at the end there, for the relationship to show, the context to show between what I sense and perceive and what the deck is understanding I perceive. It builds the language. I find that after I do a deck interview, I have a voice, like each deck then has its own voice. I didn't go as far as to name my decks. I know that some people do name their decks. I don't know. I don't know yet about that. Okay, so now we'll just get into it.
How do you see you? Japamala? Yapamala? Um, what are your strengths? Raven spirit. Oh boy. It really wants to be heard. <laughs> There's the, uh, what are your limits? Unconditional love. Hmm. As a limit. We actually had two cards jump out on this one. Um, and two cards on the first one, too. I'm wondering, I'm feeling, I'm going to double these up. I'm doubling them up because I can. Because I can. Um, what are your limits? What are your limits? Oh, boy. Yeah, they're all coming out in twos. You see that? Uh, the Fool and Get Clear are the limits. What do we have next? What are you here to teach me? What are you here to teach me? In this case, the cards are really jumpy. So I... In other times, I would normally just pull them. But in this case, I'm going with the flow. What are you here to teach me? Just one. Abundance. Check out this abundance card. Are we going to focus? Are we going to focus? There it is. Abundance. I'll take a photo. And then we'll work with, um, raise your vibe. That was in the position of how can I best learn to work with you? Raise your vibe. I'm here to raise my vibe with this deck. Love it. What is the outcome of us working together? Solar plexus chakra. I do. Ah. Motivates toward action. I love that. This is also our identity center. Our, you know, um, our desire toward creating. You know, I do. Ooh la la. Let's see. Now, last question. How do I see you? being patient with it. I hope you're patient too. I hope you're a patient person and you, you want to watch this video. All the way till the end. But, you know, tarot for me is more than just dealing some cards there's a sense to it what do the cards feel like in your hands it's like a personality it's like the, I'll just say the deck is really falling in line right now hmm. star family I mean a whole bunch of cards just fell out <laughs> so I, I want to show you the star family this is a really special card Mm-hmm. How do I see you? This one wanted to jump out. The High Priestess. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So the next thing I'll do, I, you know, I'll either journal them down, but I have a process now here. 
I'll show you real quickly. Um, that's another deck interview I did. I, I sketch it out on my iPad. Uh, great. And now hopefully the rest of this video, you're now just seeing the photo I just took. I usually pick some fun colors or whatever to work with, whatever my vibe's like today. This video's gonna have a journal vibe to it. So like if you have your journal, if you have your deck, this is a, this is a follow along tarot interview. In your journal, what I would do is I would write out the seven questions first before you begin. Leave some room, like maybe three questions per page and then start writing the cards down. I sort of just wrote it on top. So in the first position I had two cards jump out, the Japa Mala, Yapa Mala, I don't know, and the Raven Spirit. Okay, how do you see you? How does the deck see itself? The Raven Spirit card says, if you happen to live in the desert, you know the call of ravens. Listen, look at me, they urgently sing. I have something to tell you. Absorb the message. Interesting. Okay, so I did get the deck, this deck in the desert in Sedona, right? This is, this is calling toward the desert, the call of the raven and the idea of a messenger. So this deck definitely sees itself as like some, um, as an oracle spirit from the desert bearing messages. 100%. 100%. Japa Mala. Get your malas and go into your heart space. Summon your soul. Use prayer in any form. Repeat after me. Surrender and trust. Surrender and trust. Yeah. I mean, all oracle cards are spiritual in nature, don't you think? But this one in particular has an even holier feeling to it. Um, the idea of beads and prayer and prayer in any form. Summon your soul. Repeat after me. Surrender and trust. Surrender and trust. Um... It feels ritualistic. How do you see you? Um, so maybe it's saying it sees itself in the way of like a regular practice of deriving messages. Yeah, that's a pretty good response from the deck. Let's move on. What are your strengths? We have unconditional love and manifest. Let's see. Unconditional love, the source of all life force. It is an active choice. It's free. It feels good to send and receive. You're not in it for yourself, so keep handing it out. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it's saying, what are your strengths? Its strength is showing you, showing you how to connect to the source of all life like that we are part of that always um, and we're never just doing things in isolation but there's a togetherness um, and that we need to give out the love that we want to receive this unconditional love that's its strength okay and the other strength is manifestation The crone has all the wisdom. Wait, wait, wait. Erase that. Stand grounded and firm in your heart's desires. Draw in the essence of what you want to create. Be fierce. There's plenty to go around. Interesting. Okay, so we have on this manifest card um, imagery of the, the fire breath, right? Or the lion breath, fire breath. And there's like money in the form of like flowers stars and butterflies stars and butterflies there's a call to abundance coming up here there's a in the manifest there's abundance showing up again in the spread um 
this this deck so far is orienting toward the heart space. Twice we have the mention of the heart, as well as um, really like using that to mm, set in set powerful intentions for what we want. This idea that there's plenty to go around, so there's no scarcity. There's there's just abundance, infinite life force. Mm -hmm. what are your limits we have the fool and get clear it might be a new feeling when your intuition is telling you to take the leap of faith but don't worry about the butterflies in your heart again jump you know you want to and get clear clarity comes from the inside be your own guru and spend some time in your own vortex Stop looking around yourself for answers. Have vision. And it says on this card, you don't need eyes to see, you need vision. So I find that, yeah, the, in this, this position, every deck will answer a bit ironically. Like, of course it's the limit because it has to do with you. You need to get clear. Understand what it is that you want. Then show up and ask for guidance. Um, you need to take the leap of faith. Get yourself to a place to listen. So of course those are its limits because the limit is anything that has to do with us, the querent. Um, we have then, what are you here to teach me? Abundance. Lakshmi, the Hindu goddess of all things, desired even wealth. But it is much more than that. It's not about the stuff. It's a feeling. Appreciate what you already have. Mm -hmm. So the deck's here to teach us a lesson about abundance and what that means. What it means to feel abundant and connected to the things that we already have at all times. And not to have the kind of um, desire that leads toward or leans toward uh, greediness or like achievement for the sake of achievement, but to be grateful for what we have and to be always curious and growing with that, uh, with the feeling of abundant, um, how do I say, even compassion, you know, abundant compassion for all things. Interesting. Okay, next one. How can I best learn to collaborate with you? Raise your vibe. Raise your vibration. If you've decided to be a lightning bolt, you will need to raise your vibe to unknown heights to have that direct beam of light make an impact. You can do it. I see, so you've decided to be a lightning bolt. You will need to raise your vibe to unknown heights to have that direct beam of light make an impact. Interesting. Yeah. Um, how can I best learn to work with you? I understand that by raising, by coming to the table, working with the deck, with the conscious effort of raising my vibration or just doing that work, coming to the table to raise my vibration, I know that anything is possible. That's what it wants me to do. That's how I can be an active, conscious participant in the reading of the tarot. Okay, what's next? The outcome of us working together. The seven chakra cards in this deck don't have explanations in the book, so I just pulled up a couple affirmations um, to understand what is the outcome of us working together. Um, there's a focus on the solar plexus chakra. I do. My confidence is magnetic. My confidence radiates. I'm confident being my true self. I'm perfect just as I am. I'm worthy of my dreams. Every action is a step in the right direction. I can only control my actions and that is enough. I release the need to control. 
So clearly there's some sort of freedom associated with the outcome of working with this deck. I feel like it is orienting um, me toward um, trusting in the process in some ways and also being very encouraging like, yeah, go chase after your dreams. We will be here to support you. Okay, now finally, um, the last card is the High Priestess. It's in the position of, how do I see you? The High Priestess is, I mean, even in the Rider Waite tarot decks, the most esoteric card in the deck. Here she reads, There are so many levels to her. Past, present, and future timelines are her in the moment reality. From the knowledge of the universe to the passion of a peony, she knows. Never doubt her as she is you. So what I'm getting from this deck interview is that I see this deck to have many layers, as in many connections and points in which to make connections and draw meanings from. I mean, even the fact that this is a collage style deck, um, the context of imagery and symbols um, is powerful um, and can hold a lot of meaning in various contexts, you know, um, when we move around the world or talk to different people. What else? It says, she knows, never doubt her as she is you. Yeah. So I see this deck as my partner, my partner in crime. When it comes to manifestation, anything um, dealing with abundance or wanting to um, align myself toward um, abundance, receiving messages, raising my vibe, all of this stuff that appeared here on the table. The past, present, and future timelines are her in the moment reality so what I'm taking from that particular statement is that this is a deck that can time travel it'll be here with you in the present it can glean information from the past it is the past in the past it's also in the future so perhaps predictive tarot uh, which I myself haven't quite tapped into yet even though we all read sort of future positions of like what's coming next mm. all around solid deck this is going to be my go-to travel deck from now on gonna bring it with me everywhere i go i mean they made it this way they made it light no frills Sturdy cardstock, great idea, awesome oracle cards, like the cards themselves, I don't know how they came up with it. Um, I can't wait to show you guys little by little how the cards reveal will reveal themselves to you through future videos. Alright, how was that deck interview for you? Uh, let me know. I can make a faster one. I can make a shorter one um, if you'd like. I was thinking of making an animation one of just like, here's how to lay it out and here's what they mean. I mean, you can also just Google images of spreads is what I do, but this seems more fun. Okay. And thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.